Okay, so today we're going to talk about the Kennedy administration and uh, the Cold War in the 1960s. So if you guys remember correctly, we talked about the Cold War in the 1950s on our first day of this unit. And um, one of the major themes from that was the idea of the Truman Doctrine. And the Truman Doctrine was the idea of containment um, and, and the stopping the spread of communism. And so um, the big takeaway from that is to say, you know, at this point, the United States has recognized the fact that communism is, exists. Obviously, it is in certain countries, um, and it's, we are not able to go into those countries and change it back. But at this point, we're looking at how can we stop the spread of it? Um, and so the, those same policies that we do in the 1950s, where we move into Korea and we try to stop the spread of communism there, um, are just examples of that. And we're going to see further examples of that in the 1960s and again in the 1970s. So one of the things to look at here is, uh, is that in South America, we see a lot of governments that are starting to move towards communism. And the United States doesn't like that because we've always kind of followed those things like the Monroe Doctrine, where governments on this side of the world are inherently different than the, uh, you know, than the European side or the uh, Eastern side of the hemisphere. And so for South America to start changing over, like in Bolivia, Chile, Guatemala, uh, we noticed that like this could be bad because we see that spreading of communism starting to get gradually closer and closer to our own borders here. Um, and one of the places that becomes probably uh, the scariest for the United States is going to be Cuba. And that being because it is only about 90 miles off the coast of Florida and extremely close to the United States mainland. So in order to understand this area, you need to understand three major um, figures of the time period. In the United States, John F. Kennedy, or JFK, which I'll probably refer to him as a number of times. Um, you have Fidel Castro, and Fidel Castro is going to be the leader of Cuba after the uh, Cuban Revolution. And then you have Nikita Khrushchev, who is the Soviet leader, obviously over in the Soviet Union. And these three guys are going to uh, have a lot of conflict, a lot of hostility, and it's going to really culminate um, in about 1962, which we'll get to that. So uh, first thing you need to understand is that Cuba, um, which had always been at least, well, for the last, like, probably 100 years or so, Cuba was a major uh, trading ally, trading partner of the United States. Um, and where we really see Cuba become uh, very involved with the United States is going to be after the Spanish-American War in the year 1898, where the United States comes up with this policy where they say that they are allowed to intervene on Cuban affairs. So if you remember when I told you about that, that it would eventually pop up again in history and be an important thing, well, that is going to be today. So um, what basically happens is there was a leader by the name of Batista who was not necessarily looking out for the best interest of the masses of the people. So you had a lot of poverty there. And what we've talked about before is when you have a lot of poverty of the masses, um, you are very much in jeopardy of a communist revolution because basically communism is promising that it's going to equalize everything. So Castro is going to come in with the help of Raul Castro and uh, Che Guerrera, who has led a successful revolution in Argentina before this. So he's going to come over and kind of help out with Fidel Castro. And Fidel Castro is going to lead a successful communist revolution in Cuba. And it's going to happen in the mid to late 1950s, where you'll see this. Now, there's a whole bunch of people that we're going to call for this time the Cuban exiles. Now, the Cuban exiles are going to be the people who were not in support of the communist revolution. And they are going to flee after, um, after Castro takes over. Um, and basically, they're fleeing for their lives. They're fleeing um, because they don't agree with the policies. And so where do they go? They go to Florida. Um, and Florida being extremely close, it was, it was much easier for them to get to that spot. And um, it's going to be important to note these Cuban exiles because they do eventually want to go back to Cuba. They did not necessarily want to leave Cuba, um, but were in a way forced out. So we enter into this uh, incident in 1961 called the Bay of Pigs invasion. And um, what happens here with the Bay of Pigs is 
the United States CIA is going to train and finance these Cuban exiles who go back into Cuba and overthrow the leader Fidel Castro. Um, and so this is supposed to be a secret mission um, that's not supposed to necessarily be out for the public that the United States is backing this, but we do. And unfortunately, it does not go very well. Um, Cuba's targets and weather and wind shifts uh, the landings off of where they're not supposed to be. And basically, everything comes out that the United States had backed the Cuban exiles for this. So, how is that? Why is that a big deal? Well, that kind of angers Castro, like anybody would, if you know that your uh, neighboring country is now trying to overthrow you and to try to get rid of you. Right? Even though, remember, we do have the ability to intervene in Cuban affairs because of what happened back in 1898 when they wrote up their own constitution that way. So we fast forward, we get to 1962, um, where now, um, don't forget, our biggest rival, not necessarily Cuba at this time, our biggest rival is going to be the Soviet Union. Um, and so there's been a constant competition through, let's say, trade, through military, and um, this competition this competition between the United States and the Soviet Union. Um, one thing that we did, we were able to hold over the Soviet Union was the fact that we had nuclear weapons stationed in Turkey, which is extremely close to their territory. And so we had missiles that could actually hit from there. So in, a, in an effort to kind of even the score, the Soviet Union works with Cuba. Right now, Cuba's still a little mad about know what had happened with the Bay of Pigs invasion so they're very much willing to um, support the Soviet Union at this point point. and so what the Soviet Union is going to do is station these nuclear weapons in Cuba now this is very problematic and obviously um, a big cause for concern because of the location of Cuba and being so close to the United States so President Kennedy immediately orders the Soviets to remove these missiles um, to which they do not do that and so what he does in response is he sets a naval blockade on Cuba. So basically what's going to happen when we have a blockade is we are not going to allow anyone in or out, and you're not allowing any supplies in or out. Now, because the Soviets now are a, you know, a, a ally of the Cubans, they are going to come to try to break that blockade. So they start to send Soviet ships over. And all this can be drawn out in this map right here. So you see that the United States Navy is going to blockade Cuba right here. This is where the missiles are supposed to be located, right? And um, this is how close they are to Florida. So this is kind of scary, right? Now you notice over here with the blue that the Soviet ships are coming in. So there's a whole bunch of, uh, like a number of days where tensions are extremely high. And um, a lot of people are extremely concerned of whether or not um, you know, who's going to fire first, who's going to attack first, and where will this lead, you know, the world, really? Will we end up in a nuclear world war? Um, so you can, and, and a lot of times, like, you'll have these political cartoons, like the one that you see over here, which kind of um, will illustrate the tensions here. So this is uh, Nikita Khrushchev, right? This is JFK. They're both sitting on hydrogen bombs, right? This one is post stamp to go to the US, uh, USA, and this one over here to the USSR. Um, and each man is sitting there ready to blow them up. See, there's the button here, and they each have their finger on the button. Um, there And there is a video that I put in this lesson that you'll see that is about, it's called the Butter Battle Book, and you should have probably already watched it at this point, or if you haven't, then to give you a little bit of understanding, the Butter Battle Book by Dr. Seuss is actually a metaphor for not just this specific um, incident here, but basically the conflicts that arise throughout the entirety of the Cold War. So so how does this thing all end? We see that the, um, the Soviets will agree to remove the missiles from Cuba if the United States removes their missiles from Turkey. And so basically both parties are going to remove their missiles and we kind of just say, hey, look, it's not worth going into nuclear war over, you know, having one over on the other 